welcome to the OSU RIO live streaming Thursday telecast. I'm Kimberly Rouse, moderator and program assistant with the Ohio State University South Centers. We at OSU South Centers collaborate with the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College to promote small business development and provide educational programs. We also provide a platform for students and faculty to share activities as well as business development, um, agriculture, soil and water, and aquaculture research um, and best practices. Our mission is to provide programming to enhance and grow understanding in our Southern Ohio communities, in our Ohio state, and um, across the United States and globally. Um, currently, over 100 viewers have listened or viewed um, from 178 countries around the world um, to view our telecast. Behind the scenes are Dwayne Rigsby, technology specialist with the OSU South Centers, Patrick Dingle, executive producer of OSU RIO live streaming telecast with OSU South Centers, and Mike Thompson, director of instructional design and media services at the University of Rio Grande. This week's theme is international culture, and today's pre-recorded video was originally published on February 5th, 2016. It is Positive Partners, um, P-A-W, Positive, uh, with host Dr. Tom School and um, Mike Thompson discussing the importance of puppy socialization and some techniques to achieve good social skills with your animals. Um, socialization between all types of people, young, old, male, female, um, plus socialization with um, other animals and cats. Enjoy! Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Richard Sachs, Provost and VPAA here at University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College. And I am delighted today to have Dr. Uh, Christopher Pines here. Uh, Chris is a professor of philosophy and he's also president of our faculty assembly. And we're going to talk about philosophy, we're going to talk about faculty assembly, and we're going to talk about our multicultural film series, which this month um, is John Nichols' The Milagro Beanfield War and Dr. Pines. Welcome to Positive Partners, a, dog, a show about dog training. Today we're focusing on uh, socialization and socialization in puppies. Yes. So uh, what is the key time for socialization? Is it only up to a year? Well, does it go further than that? Can you socialize a dog that's like three years old? Um, you can help a dog that's three years old. There are, <clears throat> there's a, the key period of time for socialization is up till about 12 or 16 weeks. And here's, here's how come. The dogs, when they are with their moms and with their uh, litters, uh, they stay very close to home up until they're about 12 to 16 weeks of age. And during that period of time, that dog is learning what is normal in their world. So everything that they hear, taste, feel, experience back and forth with their uh, litter mates and with their mom, that's all normal for them. And that stays kind of as an imprint 
with them the rest of their lives. Now, after that, when we get them, usually we get them if we're getting lucky. If you get them from a shelter, then you're taking what somebody else is. Well, yeah, that, that all that period of time is, is gone. Right. So you're, you're kind of having to work backwards. If we get them at eight weeks of age, they've just been weaned, mm -hmm. and then we are taking over socialization that would have been occurring with their litters and with their moms at that point. And so that eight weeks to 16 weeks or 12 weeks, um, that window's closing between 12 and 16 weeks, uh, we're, we're hitting the ground running. They grow up fast. And then once they've got that initial imprinting in place, uh, what's normal for them, they are, are already got a pattern of how to cope and things aren't a big deal. What's scary, what's safe, uh, what's dangerous. That's, yeah. That's kind of figured out. And we want them to be learning kind of what's safe. Right. You know, there's always time to learn what's scary later on in life. <laughs> life gives us plenty of chances for that. But anyway, we want them mainly to be learning about what's safe through that uh, 12 to 16 weeks. So we, get, we're, we have to get started early. Uh, and they do grow up fast. And once we're past that, say, 12 weeks or 16 week period, we want to maintain that pattern with them up through about a year. We don't want to back off of that because, you know, I think you mentioned one, with one of your dogs that a medical situation came up and your dog had to be in a kennel for physical safety. Uh, and um, so uh, we can kind of talk about that when the slide comes up. We've got some slides here of how quickly dogs go from being little puppies and we've to got being full-grown dogs. A German Shepherd that's associated with you and my own dog. So we'll go through the German Shepherd first. This is my sister's dog, Daisy. And so that's seven weeks coming home, two months. Next slide. Three and a half months, Daisy's getting bigger. They're uh, four and a half and five months. At five months, Daisy's getting to be a pretty good sized girl. That's only 20 weeks. And even there, they can be a problem. A lot, yeah. You've got a lot I mean, of. Of course, jumping up and Oh, sure. If that, you know, a six-month-old little dog bites you, well, you can do a little bit. Of you're you're going to feel it. But you can expect it, though, with the, a little pup. And look at Daisy there at seven months. And that's her, her dog, dog housemate there. Yeah. And then next slide. Okay. Okay, now these are your dogs. This is that's not in the right order. Should be. Okay. okay, there we go. Okay, so Daisy at 10 months and Daisy at 11 months, she is a big girl. Now, my sister, Daisy is social with people and dogs. My sister wishes she had started with Daisy as far as getting her in a habit of walking with her and around distractions like squirrels and oh. so forth because Daisy's prey drive kicks in. Oh, okay. And um, so that's, she was, she had to play catch up with that. Um, uh, anyway, so okay. now we'll move on should, to your dogs. Should be a picture of, there we go. There. Okay, this is a Bernese Mountain Dog named Ulrich, and he is seven to eight weeks on the left, and he's four months on the right, and that's about the last time I picked him up as a four-month-old. Okay, go on. Only 16 weeks. That's at the end, the very end of that initial socialization period. Mm -hmm. He was a very friendly guy at that point. Can we go to the next one? Okay. So at eight months old, we had to have a hip surgery done. And so he was confined to a crate for four to six weeks, not, not always with the cone of shame. But... Uh, this was not quite handled as well as I had, had hoped, and this set him way back on socialization. With other dogs, he's fine. Really, he doesn't care about other dogs. You know, another dog comes up, he ignores them. People, he's very shy and a little bit afraid. On the right is one year old. I think you'd mentioned his mom was shy. Yeah. And so you had gotten him socialized. He was comfortable around people initially. He was good. He was good. 
Mm -hmm. uh, then the medical procedure comes up, the hip he that had, had to be done. I don't know if he associates people with what happened because that was a traumatic surgery yeah that was, well yeah and so what what you'd uh, the, the dilemma there was how to get him around people when he's in his cage so right. another way to have done that but you know you, you figure it out as you go Having have people come in and toss him treats and that sort of thing and so he would have been used to people coming in right but then he's you you didn't have the chance to take him out and so it would have had to have been a, a concerted effort to bring people into your house, a right. variety of people. And, and as a result of this, he is not scared of the, the vacuum sweeper. He's he used to that. He doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is two years old, and you can see how big he is. He's just with his front paws up on my lap. Okay, and this is, okay. Okay, the, the purpose of showing the large one if you go back, is if you don't socialize them right, they come out in a, maybe a few different ways. Uh, and it's a big dog. It's harder to control. He's shy. Uh, I had another one who uh, was not socialized very well. He had trust issues and had to be put down. He that had, dog came to you already, I believe, right. as an adult. He yeah. was a year and a half, two years you old. You tried everything you had could. Had fear aggression and you know that's where things go wrong and, it, and when you have a, some severe bites so, yeah. yeah when you have a big dog that's a problem mm -hmm. i mean people laugh about it when they have a little teeny dog but mm -hmm. when you got a big dog that's a different story and there was a picture in there where we took uh two of our dogs to the farm fest and they got petted by all kinds of people uh yeah, there we go. On the left, I have Rosalind and Oliver. Oliver's a very friendly guy. I got him as a rescue, mm -hmm. and he's a great dog. But 400 people probably accounted, uh, petted all these guys, and they loved every bit of it. Yeah. You know, they weren't nervous at all, and yeah. so and that's she the has key. no Those, problem with right. people. When you when you take when we're taking puppies out, we are introducing them to the world, and the way we do that is. We're introducing them to, hey, this is fun, you're safe, mm -hmm. enjoy what's around you when we do that in, uh, so that uh, if we see that they're uncomfortable, that they're not having a good time, then we back it up a little bit mm -hmm. and let them have a space or a little breathing time that they need to be enjoyable. And if they, uh, you know, if they've, after... Uh, Ten people have said hello, and the dogs who I like, okay, get the people away. Then we go, okay, let's, let's, that's great. If 400 people say hi to the dog and the dog's fine with all of them, that's successful. And the only problem I have now is she wants to say hi to everybody. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good problem. <laughs> she sees a kid down the road, and it's like, I want to see who those people are. So can we go to the slide about the socialization? I believe it's slide 12. It should be the after, best thing. should be after all the pictures. So socialization is the best thing you can do to protect your puppy's health, happiness, and life. More dogs lose their lives due to preventable behavior problems than lose their lives due to illness. And I see this all the time when I go to the shelter. Most of the dogs are between like a year and three years old. Right. And they've grown up, they've had bad socialization, or training, or lack of any training, right. and now they're a problem. Right. And now they're in the shelter, and hopefully not a high kill shelter. Right. Because then they're gone. Then they have a chance if they if the shelter can keep them. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, as far as socialization, the American Society of Veterinary Animal Behaviorists recommends that as soon as a dog has uh, had their first round of vaccines and they've had time for that immunization to kick in to get your dog out socializing. We'll talk about that. Always consult your veterinarian and consult uh, the uh, American Society of Veterinary Behaviorists to see what their the most modern recommendations are. Now with, with a puppy you have to worry about parvo and stuff like that. So yeah. you want to make sure that they're parvo vaccinations are up to date so right. you don't want to take them out into public areas where uh, 
you know, other dogs are going to the bathroom and doing things where they can pick up diseases. Yeah, we'll talk about what kind of dogs and puppies to have them around on that point there, definitely. Um, and you're talking about uh, the dogs in the shelters. The average age, and I think this is the next slide, the average age of dogs going to shelters or dog pounds is about one and a half years, and that's at that point, dogs are full size, they're stronger, they're harder to control uh, physically because they're bigger uh, uh, they and more experienced. What scared them before is uh, light is now instead of backing up from that they're bigger they're more confident and they're more likely to approach that what that what scares them in an aggressive get away from them message manner than they are to withdraw and then you that's when you can get fear aggression uh, rolling uh, by the time they're a year and a half they have a history of habits uh, that may have created frustrating problems for the owners which the owners at that point have been unable to solve. No, uh, no, they might have been pulled back from you know exposure to other things, and their socialization might have just been sort of uh, getting waning away. Mm -hmm. And besides socialization, a year and a half. Remember that your dog is an adolescent, and how your kids are as great adolescents. Point. Totally so, great point. So you got to give them a little bit of leeway yeah. you know you're yeah. a teenager and you're going to yeah. do some stupid stuff yeah there's hang in there yeah <laughs> so you want to get that good foundation started to begin with uh and uh here's I don't know. the rules yeah here's the rules you get that going it's like a good a good teamwork thing and uh a verse i think i am not usually put the bible but usually uh you know train your children as you want them to be when they're younger and they will not depart from those ways when they're older mm -hmm. they're not talking about adolescence and the same applies to dogs right adolescence you're going to go back and you're going to be reteaching right and you want that foundation to go back to to reteach so can we go to the next slide uh there uh, and it's about socialization with the litter and new family and where are we with time? Yeah, 14 minutes. Great. Okay, super. Um, there are two phases of socialization. And this is if we get a, a puppy when they're eight or nine weeks old or That's seven. That's a normal weeks. time you would pick them when they get. If, you, if you're getting them out of a litter and you have that from opportunity a breeder from something. a breeder or something, you've got socialization that well, the whole thing really starts even neonatally. So the quality of life that the uh, mother dog has, uh, the level of stress she's under is going to affect the whole litter uh, and their brain development. The care that those puppies get, the, um, they're, they're having some exposure to new sounds and some new sensations and people and so forth uh, matters even before, age, before they're weaned. Um, the uh, when they're with their moms they're going to be learning uh, bite inhibition um, from their litter mates they're going to be learning that from their moms if they're nursing and they uh, bite down a little hard they're going to they're going to they're going to know that didn't work for mom yeah that that worked with uh all rosalind and one of one of my guys did not do that so mm -hmm. the, the big bernie's mountain dogs told her you know, they played with her enough and told her, okay, this is the limit. I'm not taking this any from, more from you, puppy, mm -hmm. and put her on the ground. The older dog, uh, Riley, stayed away. He's 10 mm -hmm. years old. It's like, I'm yeah. old. Just leave me alone. Yes. Right. And then it got to be uh, where if he wanted a bone or if he went into the wrong area, she attacked him. Mm -hmm. And now that has, they figured it out. They've had a couple scuffles. And the balance of power is figured out, yeah. so she's doing better now. Yeah. And 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 uh, what uh, puppies learn when they're with their litters is they start learning. First off, they're a dog. They learn how to communicate and to read the body language of other dogs. Mm -hmm. That's where that begins. If a uh, puppy wasn't around uh, other dogs and its litter and that and and engaging in some of that rough and tumble play, it uh, doesn't know how to speak canine very well. Now, and the, the other problem I have, uh, I've got a, you know, a group of four dogs, and just because they get along within the house, within those four dogs, doesn't mean she is socialized with dogs. Doesn't, no, no, that's her group. 
Right. So, so they, she's okay with them, but another dog comes around, she can still be mm -hmm. a little aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why we're talking about getting dogs. At, well, once once dogs are with us, with our new families, they uh, are, again, through that 12-week, maybe 16-week, they're learning what's normal uh, and need not be feared. They're continuing to learn bite inhibition. So they understand people's skin is a whole lot more tender than, than other dog skin. Uh, they, if they uh, get a chance to be around other puppies and other dogs of various ages, they're learning how to interact with various kinds of dogs. Dogs, if they are only around their, their breed, they don't necessarily know how to read a breed that looks different. Maybe that other breed is larger. Maybe that other breed has a uh, has ears that are so flopped down that they don't, you know, give communication signals very much, mm -hmm. or tails that are corkscrewed or bobbed, or ears that are are like on a dobe that have been, you know, made surgically mm -hmm. to to be up in the air all the time. So, in order to, it's sort of like a different culture a little bit, mm -hmm. and they need to be exposed to dogs of different sizes, uh, and then. As you mentioned there, uh, with adult dogs, at some point, if dogs are fortunate enough to be around friendly, safe, dog-friendly older dogs who are, one, up-to-date on their vaccinations, mm -hmm. kind of we are getting into that point there. If you're going to socialize your puppy with other puppies and with other dogs, uh, then you want owners that are like-minded, that know how to read dogs, and you also want to know that all those dogs are up to date on their vaccinations. Um, when they are with older dogs, uh, at some point as a puppy gets older, those older dogs will revoke that puppy's puppy license. Mm -hmm. They will say, Is "Okay, yeah, they'll say, you know what? You're not you're not 10 weeks old anymore, and that's no longer cute. So back up." Right. We're yeah. on the we're on the level playing we're, field now. And we, you need to learn sort of how to show some, some manners here. Right. Yeah. Respect my authority. Right. Right. Or just the size, you know. So, on a side note, as yeah. far as uh, shelter dogs, don't dive into this right as soon as you get them. When they come out of the shelter, they're pretty stressed. They've had a hard life. Give them a week or two to decompress. Mm -hmm. And feel safe in their new environment, yeah. and then start taking them out and seeing your friends and all this stuff. And you're going to be finding out who this dog is. Now, I think it'd be a great program to do is introducing a shelter dog, mm -hmm. especially maybe a, a somewhat older shelter dog to your yeah. home. That'd be a super one. Mm -hmm. uh, what what uh, what dogs are learning in socialization too is they're learning a number of skills. Uh, they are learning. Um, uh, they're, we're doing house training with them. They're learning comfort with having their bodies handled for veterinary procedures and, and nail trimming. Yeah, um, trim their nails early and make it a nice experience. Give them treats. If they're a long-haired dog, yeah. you know, comb their hair. and yeah. Make everything a nice thing. Yeah, you don't have to do all the nails at once. Just get one nail and, you know, and there, then there's tomorrow or this afternoon or something yeah. or this evening. Um, you're, they're getting comfortable with people approaching their toys and their food. They're learning how to read people. They're learning give and take manners with uh, people. And puppies can start learning as early as eight weeks. It's amazing what they can learn with uh, oh, yeah. positive uh, reinforcement techniques. Uh, we had our sitting and doing all that stuff. Yeah, they, they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. They're learning come, sit, down, stay, go to your mat, take it, leave it, drop it, and walk with me. They're learning uh, how to tolerate being by themselves. So even though it's great to have our puppies with us all the time, we want them to learn like we do with children to play with play by themselves for a while. They're learning frustration tolerance. They're learning how to wait. And with good teaching techniques, they're learning how to learn. And all that really develops their, you can just see in the nervous system that it really makes a big difference with brain development. You get with all these approaches a much more stable, socially adaptable, ready to learn uh, uh, animal. Now, on the other side, if, if there's an animal, a, a puppy that's been raised in a puppy mill type situation with a stressed mom, little opportunity to play with litter mates, to explore minimal contact with people, and then it's kept for sale for weeks 
or a month in a socially isolated cage much of the day um, until after that initial uh, critical socialization window is closed by six weeks is really the outside on that. And that is the outside of the outside. That puppy has a lot to overcome and those challenges are likely to be a negative, bigger negative effect than whatever the positive aspects of that particular breed are. Um, and, and like I say, spend the time, you know, if you're going to get a puppy or a dog, uh, you have to spend that time with them to do all these things in the first year. Don't expect, I'm going to get a dog and my life is going to be the same. We're going to go out to eat and do all the same things. I'm going to go, you know, to the mall or whatever. This is compressed. You're going from infancy to adolescence in 52 weeks. Right. And you've got to do this right. And you hit the ground running on you this. You have to do this right, and then you'll have a great relationship with your dog. Yeah. If you mess it up, then you might have a problem. You're going you're gonna to be playing catch-up for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Prevention's easier. You know, it's oh, not definitely. like the car, the car guy, you know, says, uh, change your oil now. Do you want to pay me now or pay me later? Yeah, and rebuild your motor. Pay later, later. Is, is more expensive. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, if you've got another dog in the home, uh, you want that dog to be if they have problems with their habits, address those first rather than have bringing a puppy in and the, that puppy learning that older dog's habits. Yeah, that complicates things. <laughs> that complicates things. Um, and so there are ways to think about introducing as well. Usually, uh, you know, use smell and that sort of thing and provide some sort of safe barriers. Uh, if you've got another dog in the home and you're bringing a puppy in, be sure to give attention to your older dog and not just uh, oh, pile it yeah. on the puppy. The older dog will notice if they are left out in the cold. And it won't It probably won't go well. No, and they'll look at you differently. And yeah, it's a tr it's a problem. It's a trust it's, problem. Well, with it with mine, I've got four, and so you know, all the time I have to split my attention up. I'll take maybe yeah. one of them outside and give him attention because yeah. they all have to feel special. They they all notice whether they're getting something. Now. Yeah. So when you introduce, when you've got a new puppy, uh, you want to, the, a big thing is you always want to be reading that puppy. Does that puppy look happy? Is that puppy looking confident? Is that puppy curious and bouncing energetic, around bouncing around? Out. That's his what you want to see. tail between his legs. And yeah, and if you see a tail between its legs, head to the side, you know, giving little warning, uncomfortable growls, Give the t watch the dog, and rather than saying, hey, get in there, be a big boy, deal with it, back it up a little bit, make it enjoyable for the dog. Dogs at that age are naturally curious. Let their curiosity work for you. Um, you know what their pace. I read that there are certain times where they get scared of things. There will be a fear period. Oh, I'm right. so glad you brought that up. There will be a fear period during the 16-week period there. Uh, and for maybe seven days, ten days, a dog that had been just great will kind of like, oh, I'm kind of leery of things. Mm -hmm. And so you'll, if you see that happening, nothing you're doing wrong, just read the dog. Reinforce the and good. Reinforce the good. You know, I, I would just pick her up and take her, you know, so she feels safe with me. Mm -hmm. but still around the environment that she might be scared of. Yeah, you give you them know, a certain traffic. distance or you're, they're with you and so forth, and they're, then they're comfortable. Right. And then once you get that uh, going, you want to be introducing your, your new puppy to new people, people, places, things. This is people who are old or younger, using canes or in a wheelchair, various races and appearances, wearing hats, sunglasses, people on bicycles, playground noises, uh, being in the car at a friend's house in a store that lets dogs in, playground noises, children, uh, various sounds in the house like the sweeper. Mm -hmm. So rather than turning the sweeper on right next to the dog's ear, yeah. <laughs> have it like a, a room away, you yeah. know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, okay. And communicate with your puppy. They're going to be going, they're reading you and like they would with their mother or father uh, or their they're pack. Taking the they're taking the cues from you. Taking the cues from you. And like my, like my wife, you know, she uh, doesn't do it as well as I do. Uh, I don't approach it, you know, there are certain situations that have been trouble or fearsome or whatever, and it uh, gives the dog a cue if you approach this fearsome thing as 
no big deal, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm not leading the dog into a situation where I'm going, oh, my God, oh, my God, something's going yeah. to happen. Right. You want to get yourself comfortable with whatever yeah. you're taking your dog if into. If you feel calm and, yeah. and secure, the you're dog will pick that up yeah. and then be better with it. If you can, get your uh, puppy to a puppy socialization class. Those are ones that I will be offering once I get my business going. Uh, that and sounds like a great idea because you don't know, you know, just not every dog you may want to socialize with because they might have a bad attitude. And can we have the last slide? Educate yourself. If you can't get to a class, the There's last a book, slide. Book slide. There's a book slide. There's a book slide. Puppy Start Right Foundation Training for the Companion Dog. Uh, and also uh, Ian Dunbar's Dog Star Daily website. That's the next slide. Okay, what can you find at this website? Uh, that has all kinds of incredible information about dogs at all phases, but particularly puppy socialization. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for watching, and, and have a good time with your dog and spend a lot of time in training. Thanks Second for that, yeah.